Welcome to the installation video of the 4WC-TM top mount waste container. Before we begin, you will need the following tools. A power drill with a number two Phillips bit and a 3 32nd inch bit. A number two Phillips screwdriver. A tape measure, bubble level, and a pencil. In your box, you'll find the following parts. An assembled frame one or two waste containers, number six by half inch flathead screws, number eight by five eighths inch panhead screws, and rear brackets for face frame cabinets only. Fully extend the slide as you lift the black release lever. Once the slide is disengaged, firmly pull it away from the frame. The release levers lift in opposite directions. We will first demonstrate in a frameless application. Look underneath your container to verify its size. Slides for 27 and 35 quart containers are set at different heights than 50 quart containers. Measure up from the bottom of the cabinet floor to find your height location. Place the slide flush with the front of the cabinet. Extend the slide to access one of the front holes and mark with your pencil. Mark a second hole location at the rear of the slide. Ensure your slide is level. Pre-drill with your 3 32nd inch bit. Attach the slide using the number eight by 5 8 inch panhead screws. Repeat for the other slide. Move the ball bearing toward the front of each slide. Attach the frame to the cabinet slides. The release levers must fully engage with the slides. Cycle the unit. Your container should fit within the cabinet opening. We will now demonstrate a face frame application. If your back cabinet wall is thinner than one half of an inch, you will need to install furring strips to attach to the rear slide brackets. You can skip this step if your back cabinet wall is a half inch or thicker. Take a half inch thick piece of wood and cut it three inches wide by four inches long. Install the furring strip to the back cabinet wall. The height depends upon the size of your waste container. Insert the rear bracket into the outer back of the slide. Make sure the bend is facing toward the inside of the slide. Measure back 3 8 of an inch from the front edge of the face frame. Measure up from the bottom of the cabinet floor, not the face frame, and mark your height. The intersection of the two values is your first hole location. Align the front of the slide with the face frame. Extend the back bracket all the way to the back wall and mark holes on opposite ends of the rear bracket. Pre-drill using your 3 32nd inch bit. Make sure the slide is level and parallel with the side wall. The back bracket allows for side to side adjustment. Secure using the number eight by 5 8 inch panhead screws. repeats on the other side. We will now demonstrate door mounting. Measure the distance between the center of the opposite bracket holes. That is the hole spread distance. Measure the distance from the bottom edge of the cabinet opening to the slotted holes. Record your horizontal hole spread and vertical slotted hole dimensions. Next, measure your cabinet opening and then measure your door size. Take the difference of these two numbers and divide it by two. This number is your door overlay or inset gap. 
In our case, the door is larger than the opening, so we will add the door overlay to the slotted hole dimensions. If your door is smaller than the opening, subtract the inset gap from the slotted hole dimensions. Measuring from the bottom of the door, take the hole spread value and the adjusted slotted hole values and transfer those dimensions to the back of the thick portion of the cabinet door. It's recommended to add a piece of tape to the tip of the bit to use as a guide to help prevent you from pre-drilling all the way through the cabinet door. Pre-drill the holes. Loosen the mounting screws and remove the door brackets. Attach the door brackets using the number six by half inch flathead screws. Hang the door brackets over the mounting screws on the frame. Tighten the bottom screws first. Close the unit and firmly press each corner of the door. Then carefully reopen from the bottom to keep the tilt from coming out of alignment. Tighten the top screws. Minor adjustments like skew and tilt can be made on the bracket mounting bolts. Your installation is now complete. Enjoy your product for years to come.